In this video, we will be covering something called phrase structure rules. Phrase structure rules, or PSRs, are something in and of themselves not really commonly used in linguistics anymore. However, they form the base from which a lot of contemporary syntax is created. Phrase structure rules are essentially just a formalism to describe the grammar of a given language. They are a way of creating a rule that allows us to generate every possible correct sentence in a language. For those of you who have taken some computer science, this may seem familiar, and that's because Noam Chomsky was influential in both fields. Phrase structure rules take the following general form. Let's read this through. This means XP, which is simply a placeholder for any sort of phrase, is made up of, which is what the arrow is, a specifier, which refers to words that specify, like determiners, quantifiers, possessives, and degree words. Note that there can only be one specifier in any given phrase. And the brackets around it just mean that it's optional. A modifier, or mod, which is something that modifies. For a noun, this could be an adjective. Uh, for a verb, this could be an adverb. The asterisk, or star, is called a clean star and means that there can be any amount of repetitions, including zero. So you have zero to infinity modifiers. Then there is the X, which is simply what we call a head. It is the part of speech that is at the core of whatever phrase we're looking at. In a noun phrase, it would be a noun. Then there is comp, which represents zero to infinity complements. A complement is something that completes a phrase, and it is something that is necessary. It is opposed to an adjunct, which is something that is additional but not necessary to a phrase. Here is a list of all phrases that we will cover in this course. We'll have noun phrases, NPs, verb phrases, VPs, adjective phrases, APs, prepositional phrases, PPs, and then finally tense phrases, TPs. There's also a, something called a complementizer phrase, which is part of a verb phrase. We're not going to go too much into it, but I'll mention it. Um, and I want to bring to your attention that there is no adverb phrase, because adverbs are specifiers or specs of VPs. So this is all pretty abstract. Let's look at some specific examples in English. So first up, noun phrases. The PSR for a noun phrase is an NP is made up of an optional determiner, only one of them, zero to infinity optional adjective phrases, a obligatory noun, and zero to infinity prepositional phrases. This grammar can generate any of the following sentences or phrases. Dog, the dog, the big dog, the big red dog, the big red dog on the blanket, or the big red dog on the blanket on the roof. Note here in this last one that there are two prepositional phrases, just as there are two adjective phrases. Next up, let's look at adjective phrases. Adjective phrases are made up of an optional degree word, only one of them, an obligatory adjective, and an optional prepositional phrase, but only one of them. This grammar can generate any of the following sentences or phrases. Sick, very sick, or even very sick in the head. It does not generate big sick, which is two adjectives, very too sick, which is two degrees slash specifiers, or very sick in the head in the stomach, which is two prepositional phrases. 
prepositional phrases are made up of an optional degree word, an obligatory preposition, and an optional noun phrase, but only one of them. This grammar generates the phrases or sentences to, to the top, right to the top, right to the top of the mountain, where right is the specifier in each of these cases. Note here that we see a prepositional phrase can have a noun phrase. We call this an embedding, just as a PP in an AP is an embedding, and a AP in a NP is an embedding. When we have an MP that can embed a PP, for example, we can then embed an NP within that PP. And that embedded MP can embed its own PP, which can embed its own NP, and you can see how this goes on. This is considered a form of infinite recursion, which basically just means that phrases can contain phrases that can always contain more phrases. This is a theoretical infinity. In reality, utterances like the old man on the mountain in the forest near the river next to the temple under the green tree are extremely rare. In practice, we see about three embeddings in any given sentence. It seems like beyond that, for whatever reason we don't, maybe the mind is just not particularly great at keeping track of that many embeddings. Next up is a verb phrase. A verb phrase is made up of one optional adverb, an obligatory verb, one optional adjective phrase, two optional noun phrases, and zero to infinity optional prepositional phrases. This sort of grammar would generate all of the following phrases or sentences. Is, is nice, is very nice. Give, quickly give, quickly give Mary, quickly give Mary flowers, quickly give Mary flowers next Tuesday, or even quickly give Mary flowers at the store next Tuesday. Note that in these phrases, even the prepositional phrases could have more embedded noun phrases, and noun phrases could have more embedded prepositional phrases. Finally, we have a tense phrase. A tense phrase is a sentence. It's a full grammatical sentence that is generated by the rule. A tense phrase contains an obligatory noun phrase, a tense head, and an obligatory verb phrase. There is no optional unit in the tense phrase. The head of a tense phrase is the T. It is often an auxiliary, may, might, will, or would. Or it can be a special semantic unit that is not realized in speech or writing that is simply plus or minus past, at least in English. The TP rule generates all possible sentences in English. Let's just look at a few examples. Shinji went inside the robot. First, we'll mark the part of speech for each word. Then, let's mark out our phrases. A good way to start is by identifying the verb phrase. In English, it's usually everything other than the subject, which is usually the start of the sentence. So, in the sentence, Shinji went inside the robot, Shinji is the subject, and everything else is called the verb phrase. Note that a verb phrase is sometimes referred to as a predicate, which again is everything other than the subject. Now Shinji's a person, we know he's a noun, and since there's nothing else around Shinji, we can call Shinji a noun phrase. Now let's see what we have inside our verb phrase. We have went inside the robot. We know that went is the verb head of the verb phrase, but verb phrases can have noun phrases, prepositional phrases, and adjective phrases embedded. So which do we have here? 
Directly after the v-head, we have a preposition, followed by a determiner and a noun. Now remember that the VP phrase structure rule is optional adverb, verb, optional adjective phrase, optional noun phrase, optional noun phrase, and optional prepositional phrase, zero to infinity of those. The order of these constituents is important. This phrase structure rule tells us that we can have a noun phrase and a prepositional phrase, but we can't have a verb followed by a prepositional phrase followed by a noun phrase. So it's impossible to have a structure here that says inside is by itself in a prepositional phrase while the robot is an unrelated, unembedded noun phrase. What we can have is a prepositional phrase headed by inside that has a noun phrase made up of the robot embedded within it, which gives us went inside the robot. You want to make sure that every word is accounted for when chunking phrases like this. So we have Shinji, the NP, went inside the robot, the VP, inside the robot as an PP, the robot as an MP. We then want to use our tense phrase phrase structure rule to wrap this all and say it's a tense phrase. Note that here we don't need to indicate the plus PST tense head, but that will become important later on in syntax trees. Let's take a simpler example. I will cry. Let's talk about parts of speech here. So we know that I is a noun and that cry is a verb, but what is will? Will could be a verb, as in he wills it, or it could be a noun, um, but we know that we can't have a noun phrase, a noun phrase, and a verb phrase, so it's probably not a noun phrase. So is it a verb phrase? Well, in this example, will is helping. It's an auxiliary because it is adding extra information to the main verb, which is cry here. We're not saying that I will, will crying. We are saying that I cry and will is just telling us that it is in the future. So in this case, our tense phrase rule would tell us that our sentence looks like I is the NP, will is the T head, and cry is the VP. Altogether, that is a TP. You may be wondering why I indicated the T head here when in the last example I said you didn't really need to. Um, this is mostly just to illustrate that will is the T head, as opposed to the last example where the T head was an abstract feature. Um, will is an actual realized thing here. So on an exam, you're not really going to be asked to do this exact sort of activity. You may be asked, what is the head of the tense phrase? Um, and if there is a will or one of the other auxiliaries that we've talked about, can, could, shall, should, may, might, must, is, was, etc., then you should be able to identify that and type in that the T head is will or whatever other auxiliary it is. If an auxiliary isn't present and you're asked to identify a T head, you should be able to type in plus or minus past. You're not going to be asked to label a diagram like I was doing here. And remember that if a tense phrase doesn't have an auxiliary, then its T head is either plus or minus past. And you can figure out which of plus or minus it is simply by figuring out if the verb is in past tense, then it is plus past. If the verb is not in past tense, so if it's either progressive, something that ends in ing, like running, or if it is present tense, just like he runs or I run, then the T head would be minus past. Now, phrase structure rules are going to be critically important for our next section, which is essentially turning them into trees. It's probably a good idea to rewatch this video, and I'm going to upload a couple of practice sentences that you can do in your leisure, and I would suggest going through the textbook as well. Now, a word of caution. 
Phrase structure rules have a lot of different formulations. There are lots of different theories of syntax, and many people take phrase structure rules and adopt them very slightly to fit their own theory. What you've been presented with is an extremely bare form that, I'll be honest, isn't going to work for every sentence in English, especially things like idioms. But for this course, we just want to introduce you to the concept of basically structure rules that try to create and explain the created sentences that we see. There are many theories of syntax that actually don't use phrase structure rules or generative rules at all, or they use them differently. So looking online for answers is going to be very frustrating. Um, this will also apply to the next video, probably more so even. So go by what's in this video, not by what you see online. In the next video, or videos depending on how long they turn out to be, but I think it'll be one video, we're going to cover syntax trees, which are the bane or boon of every student's time in linguistics. We are also going to talk about complement phrases, um, but not super in-depth. So I'll see everybody in the next video.